It truly feels like summer when I start making different jams and preserves. I know, it gets really confusing. Is it a jam? Is it a preserve? Is it a fruit butter? You know, there are so many different ways to make it. This is a preserve because it has just chunks of fruit in it and it does not have any of those boxed artificial pectins in it that really thicken it up. So this is gonna be a little bit more loose than you're used to, but it is absolutely delicious. It captures the essence of summer. This is a strawberry basil preserve and I know you are gonna love this. And if you don't, you might as well just try it because come on, who doesn't love a delicious fresh preserve? Did I mention this is extremely easy and I'm gonna can this. You don't have to, you can stick it in the fridge or the freezer, but if you can it, it is shelf stable and it is a great gift. To start, you just want some cleaned strawberries. Just take the stems off, make sure there's no bruises that you need to cut off. If they're really big, you can kind of chop them up. You will notice that store-bought strawberries are probably gonna have a white center. That means that they were shipped from a long ways away and picked before they were truly ripe. So if you can, go to your local farmer's market and pick delicious strawberries up. They'll probably be smaller like mine are that I home grow, but they have much more flavor and are definitely worth the higher price. Because if you're gonna make preserves, it might as well be the most delicious you can have. Just dump the strawberries right into a large, heavy bottomed kettle. Now, if you don't have a jam pan like I do, because I know not everyone out there is gonna make jam all the time, you just wanna make sure to have a very heavy bottom. That means things with a lot of sugar in them, like jam and preserves have, are not gonna stick or scorch the bottom of the pan. So dump those strawberries right in and then the sugar. Sugar, yes, is extremely important. And while you might think it's a lot, it's not like you just sit and drink this preserve like a drink. The sugar is important. You spread a little bit on something, just put it in. After the sugar, you want to make sure to put some lemon juice in. Lemon juice definitely is a good thing in many ways. The juice is a good counterbalance to the sweetness of the sugar and the berries. It really brings out their flavor. And then we are also gonna make sure all the seeds are out of one of those lemons and we are gonna cut them in half and throw the whole lemon rind pith and all right in there too. That's gonna help us have some natural pectin that is in that pith and rind. And it's gonna bring it out and it's really gonna thicken this up just a little bit. Throw all that in the pot and then put it right on the stove and bring it to a boil. Just stir it around a little bit and while that's coming to heat, you can just chop your basil. Now, you could stop right here and not add the basil if that just freaks you out. I know it sounds kind of odd, but you know what? Basil and strawberries really are delicious together. Just mince it really finely. The finer you mince it, the more flavor that will come out of it and you won't notice as much in the finished preserve. I will tell you, putting this basil in there and leaving it in there when you can it, you are gonna have little bits of green leaf in there. So you might notice them and if that freaks you out, leave it out. But the flavor for me is definitely worth it and I love it. Chop up the basil and set it aside until you're ready. Once the preserves have come to a nice full boil, you might wanna take a masher if they're not breaking down very quickly and just kind of mash them up to promote that they kind of fall apart. Like I said, a preserve is not clear. It is not free of all the fruit. It's gonna have the chunks and it's gonna have the berries, but that's why I love it. You know exactly what you're eating and it's really easy. So just break them up with a masher if you need to and just stir it around. There's a few ways to tell when your preserves are ready. One, you can put a little bit on a plate, stick it right into the freezer, let it chill down a little bit and see what consistency it's at. Or you could also check the temperature. When it's around 210 degrees, that's usually a good thickened point and that's when you can take it off the stove. Just use a good instant read thermometer to find out. And remember what I said, this is not gonna have one of those boxed pectins in it. So it is not gonna be really thick and gel-like. It's gonna be very thin, but delicious and spreadable. Once it's at that consistency, just remove those lemon pieces that we put in and then put in all that prepared basil. Stir it around, let it heat through the basil a little bit to really bring out the essence, and then just remove the preserves from the stove. If you are not used to or comfortable with canning, make sure to watch our Canning 101 video. It is gonna bring you up to date on everything you need to know. Just make sure to follow the directions on the box that you buy, because sometimes they can vary. Pour the preserves right into your ready jars. Wipe the tops off with some hot wire to sterilize and get any drips off, and then put on your lids. Screw the rings on tightly, and then put them right into your water bath. 
bring the water bath back to a boil, and then you just water bath them for 10 minutes, guys. This is so simple. Pull them out, kind of slightly tip them to get that excess water off the top, and then just wait to hear the ping. That music to a canner's ears when you hear that seal. Honestly, preserves, jams, any type of fruit butter like this, it seals so quickly, usually as you're pulling them out of the kettle. Let them cool off completely and sit for at least 12 to 24 hours. Then you can remove the rings if you want to, store them in a cool dark place, give them as a gift, or pop them open and just eat them. This is absolutely delicious. It is good on your morning toast. It is good on a sandwich or a grilled cheese. I know, sounds weird. Try it. It's delicious on ice cream. You are gonna love these preserves. Anyone can do this and I can't wait for you to try it. Make sure to like the video, leave a comment below. I love to hear from you guys and follow me on all my platforms. I love when you share my videos around Facebook and when you like my Instagram pictures and I love to hear from you guys.